Hi guys, welcome to The Tea, where I'm going to be talking about all the latest news around the world and also around Chicago. So without further ado, let's get started, okay? Alright guys, so I'm just going to randomly pick some stuff out and start talking about them, okay? All of these are going to be from the Chicago Tribune. Um, this is from April 2016. They're all going to be different days though, because I do it like daily. So they're also there's also going to be some from the Chicago Times. Okay? Also within the same week, 2000. But we're just going to focus on the month and the month and <clears throat> month and year. Okay. So without further ado, let's go, okay? So, this man named Jimmy Dunlap, he was found guilty after waiting for a sentence since 1992. Um, apparently they found some evidence um, through a DNA through his DNA, they did like a DNA analyst or something like that. I just don't understand why it took them so long since 1992. I thought that was weird. And has been waiting in jail since 1992. Because I'm like, it honestly didn't say. So I just thought that was weird, guys. So if anything knows more about, if anybody knows more about that, the Jim, the Jimmy, Jimmy Dunlap, let me know. Okay, and then I want to talk to you guys about, let's see, family issues, 7-Eleven sues over death outside the store. So if you guys haven't heard about that story, this guy right here, his name is Marquez Gaines. Um, he died, he died a really bad, horrible death in Chicago. Um... This was, it was this in really, in, it's hard to believe that this was in Chicago, like, I'm like, ugh. I'm gonna read, I'm just gonna read, um, a section of it for you. It says, after leaving the bar, Gangs went to the 7-Eleven to buy a bag of chips. Outside the store, he soon found himself in the middle of a confrontation between a 7-Eleven security guard and a man who just been kicked out, according to Suit and Hurley. The man who been booted from the store spoke with the pointed spoke with and pointed at Gaines before assaulting him. Gaines tried to get away from the man from the man before he was punched and a few feet away from the store a few feet away from the store's front door. At this point, the security guard was restrained by the seven eleven corporation goes into the safety of the store and calls 911 from within the store. Hurley said Thursday at a news conference held, held steps from where Gaines was killed. Police asked if the man is breathing and the security guard didn't know. He then goes out and looks at the at Marquise Gaines lying in the street and Stands there talking to 911 while the cab drivers up and <clears throat> while a cab driver ups and drives over Marquise and kills him. Marquise and kills him. So I just wanted to tell you guys that part first, just so you can know the story. So I'm just I'm. It's crazy. I think. How even if you're a security guard, you're not you're supposed to still have like a decency for someone's life, you know. If you feel, especially if you're at work and it's like right it, and the event took out took place inside, you know, you're not supposed to just you know. You, of course, yeah, call the police. That's what you did that part. Right? But then when you just kind of just like didn't make sure that the person right there was okay. Like, did you ask the people in Seven Eleven? Was it okay? I guess that's why they're suing 7-Eleven because they feel like the guard that was in 7-Eleven could have did something. 
which actually is okay so i'm going to tell you both parts of this in a legal stance no the security guard actually didn't have to help because it wants this once the situation or whatever the issue is is no longer on the property they don't know they no longer have to deal with it they do have to call police but the immediate situation that's going on like if someone's fighting us for example if someone's fighting on um on the corner next to a building if they're fight or well, not on the corner but they're just fighting on the sidewalk that you still can consider that the property so depending on where their property is, I don't know, and you know, it's still right next to it, even though it's, you know, on the sidewalk. So that that could easily spill over onto the property so a person could handle that. But I'm guessing what happened is once they went onto the street, that's when Marquise um and oh or the security guard left and went back into the, the to the store because he said it was you know they're no longer on the property line they're past the property and he can't go past the property because that's what he's contracted to do and if something happens inside the property while he's out there doing that off the side out of the property then he will lose his job or he or she will lose their job because it doesn't i don't think it says um the gender or anything of the security guard so um, yeah, but, and then after all of that to get punched in the face and you get punched in the face, you, okay, you're, you're unconscious, people are all around you, people will steal your money and then walk off like, you know, like, you know, they've helped you and you've got up. So that's probably why the taxi driver drove over him because he saw all the people around and then they all left. They all were standing. They all were fine. So maybe the the, track, the taxi driver thought that someone probably picked him up and like like you would think people would do like instead of just leaving someone on the ground, and especially if you've just been all around him like that, you know. And then it's like you walk off, and he's like, he's probably thinking, hey, yeah, they picked him up. He's he's good, okay, and he's just driving. If he even knew that, because you know if you're in a car. But then again, you should be looking. But then again, who just who just why if you if you're just if nothing if nobody's acting like anything is wrong and you're driving and your car is up and you're not going to really be thinking like oh there's someone just lying on the corner just like you know you know and especially if you're looking at, if, at the people walk by so i mean he by him running he's not excused from running him over but that also there's no excuse for those people crowding around him and then leaving him there like that because they don't know if he was a bad person or not like he might have been a good guy or you know if not a good guy but he might have been you know not, not not on that kind of stuff you know not like on any evil or harm to other people he was just trying to go about his life you know like one of the, just a normal person you know so it's like they he do exist normal people do exist so, I don't know, that was just weird. If anybody knows any more about that story as well, let me know, okay? Okay, so, now I'm going to talk to you guys about the, what is this? It's called, I Just Wanted to Live and Be Free. So, this is about a man named Eddie Bolden, Bolden, Eddie Bolden. Okay, he was sentenced in 1994 for killing two people. He was freed after 20 years. I just want to show you guys a picture of him. He was freed after 20 years. And, let me see, did I align anything really real quick on here? Because I don't, it doesn't look like I read the article. I just looked at the key points, I'm guessing. So, okay. It says that his alibi, okay, he broke up his alibi. On Tuesday, prosecutors decided to drop the charges against Bolden, who spent 20 years in prison. Okay, right, okay. So basically, he was charged of double murder and he was freed after 20 years of jail. Um, funny, the thing that made me really want to look at this is because look at his hands. <laughs> like, I'm getting paid. <laughs> 20 years, he's like, I'm getting paid. But <laughs> okay. so now I want to talk to you guys about this article. It's um about the justice or the FBI still looking at 
Microsoft, those Microsoft accounts. Um, they, Microsoft took them to court and the judge basically rejected their claim. Um, so basically Microsoft is still, I mean the FBI and et cetera are still trifling through people's lives without them knowing. Or kind of, sort of, because if you don't, I don't know, it's like how is, if, if they are really doing it, then why would this article be out? It seems kind of weird, right? It's like, because you kind of are telling us because you, but if you don't read the article, I guess you wouldn't know and they aren't talking about it in the news, like on like, the t on television, you know, so I guess because so many people have, um, so many people have died, like celebrity wise, Prince and then China, and then um, the lady from Everyone Loves Raymond. So, okay. That's okay, I'm gonna talk about family a family suing over the fatal shooting, a fatal cop shooting, okay? Now, everybody knows about, um, what's his name? Mr. McDonald's, uh, what's his name? Laquan, Laquan McDonald. Okay, he was shot. If I'm not mistaken, he got into a shootout with police, or this is how the story goes, allegedly. allegedly um, he got into a shootout with police as he was running from them for whatever reason, and um, like as I said in the previous uh, previous show, I think the previous chief, he uh, yeah just got into a shootout with him, and he, he shot at them or. They shot at him, and he shot back, or whatever. Shots were basically exchanged in some form, and he ended up getting shot. So, and and um and dying. So now it says the family is suing. So I want to read the art, uh, part of a really small snippet of the article about that. Okay. So it says the suit brought by um, McDonald's mother also cited that uh, Mayor Manuel, a uh, mayor. Rahman uh, Emanuel Police Accountability Task Force that found inherent racism in the department and accountability system is broken. Police have no regard for the sanctity of life and it comes to people of color. When it comes to the people of color, the suit said, quoting from the task force report. Okay, so that's basically a copy of the task force report about what um, McDonald's mom said about the uh, accountability and the job that Rahm Emanuel is doing and the task force. Oh, I also want to say, can't people give Rahm Emanuel a break? Rahm Emanuel didn't shoot your baby girl. I'm sorry, he didn't. Like, yeah, he's he's. This is his first time being a mayor. So how about people give him a break a little bit? You know, he's trying to do his best that he can do trying to bring revenue to the city he's trying to do something you know I like give him a fucking break seriously oh no so I, I think she's crazy like I don't I don't know I'm still iffy I'm like let's say I'm 75% on the police side right now and 25% on her side and his side because I from how it seems, and how I'm, I'm up in Chicago all my life, I don't know. If you 17 and you got a gun, first of all, that's already a, a sign. A sign that something's up, you know, because you ain't even old enough to have a gun legally. On April 20th, the CFD deputy failed an alcohol test, but it's unlikely he will be charged with anything. This is a picture of the, F the CFD um, deputy. It's right there. His name is John Nicholas. I'm going to read you two different portions of this because I thought it was crazy. Now, this, the C. FD stands for Chicago Fire Department Deputy. Okay, so it says here the third highest ranking member of the Chicago Fire Department was assigned, was reassigned, has resigned after failing a breathalyzer test, but questions linger 
about why he has not been charged with drinking under the influence or driving driving under the influence. Chicago Fire Department officials on Thursday night released a statement confirming that the CFD Department Commissioner John Nicholas failed a sobriety test after a crash near Wednesday. After a crash Wednesday, basically. Okay. So, yeah, then it talks about the crash that he had to get into, like, a, um, he got into a car accident Wednesday, apparently. And they gave him a breathalyzer test. He failed the breathalyzer test, and he did not get charged with anything. And that's what this picture is right here. Like, this is the damage to the car. I'm guessing that's, um, let me, wait, I think it might say, yeah, that, that's his car. So, you can't really see it, but, you know, that's crazy. I guess when you're part of that, that cycle, then I guess you can get away with stuff like that. Um. Okay, I also wanted to mention that over a thousand people have now been shot in Chicago. They came out with an article about all the people, you know, not about all the people, but it's just that in general that, you know, a lot of people have been getting shot this year. And now it's over, it's, over. it's been over a thousand now, which is ridiculous. Um, Okay, so I'm going to be talking about something from Rob, Mayor Rob, uh, Ray, the Raymond. I cannot say that guy's name. Mayor Raman Emanuel. I hope I said your name right. <laughs> okay, so this is a picture of um, the McCormick Place, the east portion of it that's supposed to be getting torn down to make the Lucas Museum for a Star Wars, you know, or Star Wars museum, I should say, um, basically he's still trying to get that lot, and like I said, he was trying to bring revenue to the company, I mean, to the, to the city and the state, so, I, I think it's a cool idea, I think it's a fresh idea, so, I think they should let him go ahead and pass that, okay, and Finally, I wanted to end it all by talking about a woman by the name of Don Richard. Okay, she's a music artist. She got a nice big article and um, actually checked out some of her music. Actually checked out, only checked out one song, but she was available on YouTube. And so I was like, okay, let me see what she has. And I just picked a random song, listened to it. It was really different, really nice. She has a lot of videos. So I definitely would recommend people check her out. So without further ado, I like to say thank you guys for watching. Um, please comment below, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video, okay? Bye. Love you guys.